Hello, in this video I'm going to show you a very interesting game from round one of European Team Championship. It was played by Oscar Lars Hauge from Norway and David Howell from England. Howell was in a very good form, he was playing really well in Grand Swiss. And this was his first game in this tournament. He was playing with black here and the position seems quite blocked. White plays here Queen a4. Because the threat was c4 by black. So he plays this to avoid the c4 and uh, now black plays rook e7. White takes on c5 and after bc5 he took on a5 which uh, might seem a bit risky because the queen might get trapped here and uh, <laughs> I don't know I would be a bit scared to to do such a move. And now Howell chose to play c4 which was correct trying to block the situation and also to fix the pawn on b2, which might be attacked later on. Now uh, white takes on f5 and black takes on f5 back. Now black has control over e6, also he wants to play rook eb7 next, which might be a bit scary for white. Now bishop e3 and the point of this move is to stop d4, to block with bishop d4 and also to get rook e2 to defend the pawn on b2. Once black doubles, like in the game, rook e2 was played, and now king g6. He wants to block the g file without playing g6, which would weaken f6 square and all the squares around the king. So he wants to block that, and now bishop d4 by white, rook c8, and now queen a4. White wants to evacuate his queen, and now black makes a mistake and plays h4. If he tries to double now on the b file, if white goes to d1, then Black takes on b2, takes and goes queen takes a3. Now the rook on, a on b2 is under attack. If you defend it by the rook, then queen a1 check, king d2, and now rook takes. After which king e1, rook e2, king e2, and bishop g4, and now this should be winning for black. After h4, which might be the best move here, now rook b3 is very good stopping the evacuation process with the queen d1 and just blocking the, the queen side completely and keeping some kind of status quo in this position. It's not easy to find how white can continue. If white goes to a7 then just attack it. If queen c5 to somehow change the route, queen d7 again is very good. It's not easy, it's not easy, because if the rook goes to e3, for example, then rook b5, and we can repeat moves here. And in case of queen a4, we have doubling on the b file, which might not end up being great. And also in this position, uh, let me just show you, if white tries to evacuate by bishop f2, and going to e3 by queen, then you might face a move like queen a4, and now it's not really pleasant. By the way, if you find any mistakes in my analysis, please uh, inform me and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Howell played h4 here, and now white's queen gets back to d1, uh, trying to get queen e1 on time and hit h4 and d6 at the same time. Now rook a8 by black, and queen e1. And now white hits the e6 pawn, a black defends by rook a6, queen h4, and now to stop any entries with queen h8, he goes queen f8. And now white plays queen e1. Uh, if he played a move like uh, rook from e2 to e3, that would be even better, because if, white, if black tries somehow to counter this with rook a3, now rook e6 is very nice as a counter sacrifice and if bishop takes rook e6 king f7 and after f5 uh, black's position is just crumbling because next move is going to be g6 with queen h7 and if, if black goes rook a1 he's going to have only a couple of checks because the queen on uh, h4 defends e1 that's unfortunate for black very very unfortunate instead white chose to go back to e1 and now king h7 was played by black. Now it was a chance to go rook a3. 
And after rook e6, now king h5, not capturing the pawn. Chilling on h5 and uh, rook, rook a1 is a big threat. Now if black takes, which I think is a must, rook b1, king d2, now take the queen. And after a couple of more moves, this endgame is maybe slightly more pleasant to black. But it's all in limits of a draw. Because bishop on d4 is a very nice blockade, uh, blockading piece. And it's going to be tough to break this, for, this kind of fortress. Which white is going to set up. So you see, you saw how how the position turned from almost winning in this case instead of queen e1 to go rook e3 to white playing queen e1 and uh, trying to keep a draw after rook e rook a3 and the position is really really unpleasant. But uh, luckily for white, uh, black goes king h7 because now it's around the move 40 and I believe that it was uh, time trouble for both players so it's understandable that they have such mistakes after g6 now black is forced to open up the position and now if king takes g6 now queen h4 is very dangerous and after rook c6 because if you go to f7 then rook takes f5 and after ef Queen h5 is deciding because if king g8, rook e8, and now you lose the queen, which is a bit too much. And in case of g6, queen h7, and that's it. So after queen h4, let's say black plays rook c6, but then rook g2 on king f7, just go rook g5, and the position is looking really depressing for black. Because now we have a, a position with opposite color bishops, but the one side is attacking, and in this case it's it's white. Uh, white has at his disposal all the dark squares in the position, which is very useful. He would attack g6, g7 later on. This position is really not promising much, and that's why black just took with the bishop. But now, uh, now black has different problems. Check, king g8, and now rook g5. And now, if bishop doesn't go, it's either taken or just white doubles on the on the g file and puts even more pressure on the bishop. Black has to find something else. He takes on a3, and now white takes on g6 because capturing on on a3 is ridiculous. He would just capture and uh, get some perpetual, I believe. After rook b2, king e3 takes takes, and after queen b2. Now white has to be careful not to screw up this one because after queen c1 you don't want to go to e1 because of bishop d3 and after king f2 just take and the point of bishop d3 is that uh, black is going to capture this rook with check. By that he's not going to lose the e6 pawn. So after this just queen g5 and uh, black is two pawns up which is... Great. And uh, if he did something like uh, queen f4 immediately, then bishop f2 would be good, and after queen g5, take on e6, and it's much easier to hold this one. But white has to be careful not to jump into such variations, so he has to be satisfied with the, with the draw. With king f2, and I think it's just uh, king g1, and you just go back and forth. To avoid all this nonsense with capturing on the a on a3, white chose to take on g6, rook a1, and now king d2, because king c2 runs into queen f5. Queen f5, and uh, once the queen gets into the play, it's checkmate. <laughs> the king goes to d2, queen f5, he tries to give a checkmate on d3, but now white gives a check. King h7, and now very nice move, rook h6. If king takes, queen h8. If king goes to g6, rook g2. And if king f7, rook g7, checkmate. If queen covers, then rook e6 is very nice. And on g6, he takes on g6. And if king takes, queen f6, and this checkmate, nice. After this, if he goes to h5, now 
yeah, this is a checkmate queen e5, and if king g6, go back, and we have the same checkmate. If if it goes to h4, then queen g5 and queen g3. So because of all of, all of that, Cowell chose to go and capture with the pawn, but now the king gets running and running. And now Black's king just runs and runs, but it doesn't finish in a good way. We have a bit of a speed run. King h5 and now rook g5. Queen has to capture fg and now rook b2. Now black uh, tries to be tricky, but uh, white avoids this very successfully. King e3, king g4. Now the threat is rook e1 and checkmate. This was the first threat. h3, king takes, and now queen h6. King g2, the second trap, rook e1, king f4, and rook e4. So if, if white goes queen h5, rook e1, king f4, and rook e4 checkmate. Second threat, white avoids it, queen h4, stopping, queen, uh, stopping rook e1. Rook f1, third threat, rook f3 checkmate. But now queen g4, stopping this threat. King h1. King h3, queen g1 now, and now queen takes e6. Because now if uh, if you think, oh, but this is a skewer. Nope, it's not. King f3, and after king f1, just go give a check, and that's it. And after king h2, you can pick this. Do you want to be merciful to give a checkmate immediately, or do you want to be a sadist and take a rook and go on and on with it. That's all matter of taste. So here black makes a fourth, do I count right, fourth threat, rook b2 checkmate. And again, white successfully diffuses the situation. Queen g4 check, king f1 and now queen d1 check. King g2 and now because the e2 is covered, he can push the pawn. Rook b8. Again, threat, fifth one, rook e8. So, queen g4 check, diffusing the situation again, goes back, queen h3, king e1, queen h1, oh, oh man, this, this king is, uh, is crazy. Rook f1, queen h2, and after rook e8, bishop e5 was the final blow, let's say, and after d4, white just captured, and... Black cannot avoid the checkmate on e2 or d2. This was a very interesting game, which finished really badly for Howell, but White showed a really, really good play. You saw a really a weird game with the with the king walk all the way from g8 to e1. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this this big king walk. Black didn't enjoy it, but. Why did? That's it. Uh, have a nice day and see you later. Goodbye.